welcome to JWL Sports, where we break down all the best sports clips from around the country. You're probably wondering, well, why would I watch this when I can watch the actual video itself? Well, because over there, you don't get the same level of engagement. They don't actually care what you have to say. They don't read the comments. They don't interact with you. Here, we do. If you like what I have to say, tell you like it. If you think I'm a complete moron, then please tell me that you think I'm a complete moron. So please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let's build a community. Let's get into some discussions. Let's get into some fights. And ultimately, let's have some fun. So here we go. First things first. Let's take a look at Super Bowl odds. San Francisco, another one of my picks at one. Baltimore <laughs> at two. Kansas City plus 700 at three. Followed by Miami, Philly, who Brew temporarily has. And finally, Dallas have the Chiefs, who have the third best scoring defense and the 10th best scoring offense, which I was concerned about in the past. Uh, become actually underrated at this point. All right, America, look at this clown. And Wilds gets mad when Brew and I call him a clown, but he does clown things. Chiefs are like not right underrated. After having the second most famous Chiefs fan in America and the mayor of Kansas City officially on video on this show no. tell you you've been excommunicated from Chiefs Kingdom. You break into my office, take my Chiefs championship belt that was sent to me by the team, and you put it on Doesn't the show. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't so, look like I got excommunicated. Oh, no, okay. So here's <laughs> the thing. The show. Don't worry about me. Stink. All right, that's I fine. Like I'll it. talk to them. Uh, I, like it. I don't think they are underrated by Vegas. Yeah. I don't think they are underrated by the betters. Now, listen, I think that I would flip-flop Baltimore and Kansas City, but that's parsing. Like, no the, I think that they are considered right now a consensus top three team, especially given what happened to Philly yesterday. I think that right now most people have San Francisco as a clear number one for the whole yep, league, yep. and then Baltimore and Kansas City right there after them, and then a group of, I think, Dallas, Miami, Philly, Detroit, Kind of in a in a group right there with Buffalo. Some people have it like if they get in, they're there. So I don't think they're underrated, except for on shows like this, because I think and this was my frustration yesterday. I feel like for a team that it seems like we all agree, eh, probably right now third best team in the league. All we do is talk about their flaws. All we do is talk about their issues. And even after a win where they did a lot of the things that people have been demanding of you. This is where Nick Wright is so obnoxious because he does the same thing with the 49ers, specifically about Brock Purdy. He's constantly saying how Brock Purdy isn't that good, how, you know, he's a system quarterback, that if you replace Brock Purdy with, you know, um, Patrick Mahomes, that would be the greatest team in the history of the world. You know, that's literally what he said. Um, and you know, he talks about how, you know, Dak, Dak Prescott is the MVP over Brock Purdy when obviously the 49ers are number one and Brock Purdy has, is like, you know, what first or second in like pretty much like every QB stat there is. So this is where Nick Ray just always talks out of both sides of his mouth. And like, I've warmed up to Nick Ray, honestly, but just the show in general, first things first, it's entertaining. But he just always talks like he's the smartest man in the room, like he knows everything. And he's he's a great debater and he's and he's great at manipulating, you know, his points and other people's points to make him look like what he's saying is just so accurate and what everyone else is saying is not. And this is a perfect point of him doing that. Of course you're talking about all of the flaws of the Chiefs. They're considered to be one of they're they're in the dynasty. They're they're in their dynasty that Patrick Mahomes this is the same thing that they do with all great teams, whether it was the Lakers, whether it's LeBron James, whether it was the Warriors. You know, when the Warriors were going through their dynastic run, um, all they did was talk about is, are they still, are they too reliant on Steph? You know, is Klay Thompson good enough? What about, you know, Draymond Green, his attitude? He doesn't do enough. You know, is Steve Kerr actually a good coach or is it just good players? You know, like all of these things that they talk about. So he's acting like this is so unique to the Chiefs. When a team is really good and when they have like one of the best players that's considered to be potentially one of the greatest players of all time to pass, you know, maybe Tom Brady, you're going to get criticism. That is how it works. Welcome to life. Wilds were aghast that I was happy with it. After hearing all week on this show and others, oh, that Patriots defense, 
hottest defense in the NFL. Well, two, uh, two at one the, thirty to nothing the, against the Jets defense, the, but we didn't hold, have a parade. Hold, hold on, but I, right, but I would I would argue personally that if anybody on any of the shows the week leading up to it was saying the Jets are going to win, they should have then on Monday been like, "Good job, Tua," the, as opposed to you didn't do enough. They have the so, tenth yes, best scoring so, offense. Yes, yeah. So if Martin <clears throat> Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio make the tenth best movie of the year, the, we'd be like, you know what? And it doesn't heavy get heavy as the hand that wears the crown. Except, you know that. I except, mean, that's, that's what so, it is. So the, is the question, this is what I don't understand. Is the question, is the Chiefs offense become underrated or the Chiefs team? team is because you're, because so they're, they're eight and five. I, I mean, that's uh, not a great I, record. I agree. Do you agree with me, Brew, that they're right now? Like, I think you agree I, with I everything agree. I said. I don't think they're underrated on our show. And I think because you think they're going right? to win it. You think they're going to win it. I think they got a great chance. I do think other shows I've listened to. I was listening to pundits this morning saying they cannot make the Super Bowl with that group of receivers. I'm not going that far. So I do think among pundits and analysts, analysts, they are underrated. I think Vegas, I agree with you, has it right. I think this is right on the money. The only reason to put them ahead of Baltimore is history. history. Yeah. That's it. But outside of that, this year, who's played better? San Francisco, Baltimore, Kansas City. So well, let's, let, I mean, let's talk about that that group of receivers. If they just catch the ball, they've got the best record in the AFC. Right, and the best that, record in football, probably. Well, yeah. I don't know about football, but they're yeah. they're right there with them. They're yep, right yeah. there with. But if they just catch the football, so you know the reason that they're undervalued, if you will, if they are undervalued is because we have such expectations yes, of the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes. I have an expectation of them to play better than they're playing. And I look at 8-5 and five and I say, that's not where you should be. So they have underachieved based upon the drops, the turnovers, the things that they haven't done well. So so this is where I disagree. Because they said they, we always make these types of statements. If they catch the ball, then they would be a better team. But they can't catch the ball. That is their level of skill. So therefore, that is who they are. They're not underachieving. A player who can only shoot, you know, 25%, okay, is not underachieving. That is the best that they can do. If that is the best that they can do, then by definition, they are achieving exactly what they can. That is who they are as a player then, okay? So the Chiefs aren't underachieving. They are playing the best they can play. Their receivers drop off. It's one thing if these were flukes drops or if, you know, all of the wide receivers got injured or sick and that's why they're dropping it and it's just a matter of time before they stop it. Then I could understand that, okay? That's not the case here. Their drops, their level of play, their, mis their mistakes – is who they are. So they're not underachieving. They're playing exactly to their abilities. Their abilities is what they are right now. And what they are right now is like the third or fourth best team in the NFL, um, you know, to win the Super Bowl. So they're not underachieving. They're achieving exactly what their capabilities allow them to. I, I look at them right now as third in, in like behind San Francisco, behind Baltimore. That makes yeah. sense to me. But I will yeah. tell you this, if the games get switched in the AFC and they have to go to Kansas City, if Baltimore has to go to Kansas oh, City, that's game time. Yeah. I would take I would take, if I had a pick, I would take Kansas City at home. And, and I think a lot of people will pick the Chiefs yeah. on the road in that spot. By the way, I understand that again on this show we're gonna act like the Patriots game didn't count, but it did. So they are nine and five, to be fair. Oh. They are the, the oh, and the so game. they the and like wild. Usually you put, only get a half put, game I, to beat the yeah, Patriots. You, you put <laughs> out you put out one. a pithy tweet. I what thought was it was funny with the contenders issues. It was really oh, yes, a Niners yes, tweet. Yes. A Niners team that Wilds after picking to miss the playoffs now is winning the Super Bowl. It should I be noted. injuries. Um, well, they the. And it was all the contenders issues, and the Niners was which one of our guys should win MVP. Yeah. But I also looked at it as a Chiefs tweet because oh. Philadelphia's issue was defense. Yeah, as a whole. Doesn't seem fixable. Dallas, Dallas's issue was road games. Yeah. Unless they're the one seed, doesn't seem fixable. Baltimore's issue was injuries that are sustain that they have already sustained. Doesn't seem fixable. The Chiefs' issues was wide receiver drops, the biggest culprit of which you know what they can do not play so I like that so they, 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 they can just put Tony I know that Tony hasn't been the whole thing yeah right, but he's been the most glaring in game one in the last game but they don't want to seem to the, bitch him 
I don't yeah. think they want to, but they, I think they might end up having to. Do you think the issue in the drops is magnified because the... Listen, the drops can't be magically fixed. That's not the way this works. So, again, it's also unfixable. This is where Nick is just being biased. But what do you all think? Please let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear your thoughts on this one. And again, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much.